Is it still alright crap all over Isekai as a genre? I have to ask because, honestly, we're at a point now where everyone knows it's bad. Even its fans have an understanding that they're not watching high art and it's just silly wish fulfillment given a budget. Not that I want to bash on others for enjoying things other people don't since I just had my glass house cleaned. Needless to say, I'm not a fan of a bland, overpowered protagonist injecting themselves into a world woefully unprepared for their inevitable domination while hordes of sexy women throw themselves at the main character's feet for gracing them with his mere presence. But I kinda like this show. For whatever reason, Tensei Shitara Slime Datoken, or that time I got reincarnated as a slime, is absolute trash and I can't stop tuning in every week when an episode's released. I'm caught in its absurd little spell for whatever reason, despite knowing the protagonist is gonna come out on top with little effort, I still wanna know what happens next. Seriously, this show is like replaying a video game with god mode on, where you know it's not challenging, but you do it anyway just to feel superior for once in your miserable life. That's not just me, right? So I guess my point here is, we all need junk food in our lives, and this series has become mine for the season. A dumb show that's completely inconsequential in its storytelling that pumps pure catharsis into my veins. And believe me, nothing about this series is worth your time on paper. Besides the obvious quirk of this series, the protagonist being reincarnated as a basic enemy monster, a slime of all things, it's a pretty by-the-numbers isekai, having an all-knowing plot device to answer any questions the main character has about the world or his predicament. He has god-level powers and is displaced into the other world with lower-level technology than his own. It's just as much an isekai as any other on the market, so why does this one stand out? Or rather, why is this one caught not just mine, but the attention of so many others who actively shit on isekai as a genre? Animation, characters, plot, hell, even the world itself is devoid of originality. But fuck me if this isn't riding the edge of so bad it's good. Let me break it down. Presentation is key when creating an animated show. Character designs, movement, and how scenes are portrayed makes a world of difference in terms of audience experience. This can be done abstractly or through creative scene composition. But this series falls flat on its face on that front almost out of the gate. Color palette is bland and flat with little for even shading to give the characters depth so they don't bleed into the usually tan and green backgrounds. Very little pops visually. The signs are, and I hate to say a subjective word like this, but they're bad. Like really bad. I mean, not ugly or garbled mess, but bad because they're bland. I can't even remember the characters besides the main three or so, and they honestly only stand out to me through their over-the-top character traits. Yeah, I'm including the protagonist being a ball of goo as a character trait. But that's purely superficial. I can look past a bland still if it looks great in motion. But do you honestly think a show like this does that, though? Hell no. I like to throw the word stilted around a lot, meaning the animations are minor, or stiff, or not dynamic. It's like watching blocks of wood tumble about on screen. It's not striking or even particularly interesting to watch, which baffles me more and more I think about it because I question why I'm still watching. Then you had the fact that this series wears its video game inspiration on its sleeve like an armband in 1940s Germany. Yes, it stands out that much, to the point where the first episode feels like a video game tutorial for the protagonist. We're introduced to his predicament by his Navi of the series, a disembodied female voice with all the charm of your phone's text-to-speech function, and the concept of skills. Literally video game skills. I shit you not. Each introduced through a quick pop-up screen showing the skill's stats and basically what it can do. Who'd have thought being reincarnated as a slime gave you access to Wikipedia? Which I suppose works into the magic system of this world. You see, it's all based around the idea of aura, which indicates one's magical power. These are pretty generic terms that immediately inform you exactly how something functions in this world, and there's zero deviation from that. What's your first thought when thinking of magical aura? That's exactly where the show goes with it. It's your basic ass pull explanation that allows monsters to communicate with one another telepathically and engage your opponent based on their power level. Did you honestly think a series like this wouldn't want to flate its main character with a silly concept like power levels? You must be new at this. But skills are something people can learn and obtain, allowing them to use them at any time they desire. From something like crafting to shooting sticky strings. Skills are the foundation of the series' world building, and it's somewhat intriguing, but nothing to write home about. It's not exactly complex, and there's a sort of hidden MP value attached to it too. Also, names are a big deal in this world, with some sort of hidden power attached to them, so there's pretty much zero originality on every level. Hell, even for the plot itself, it's not breaking out of any boxes. Though that might be a bit useful if said box was a coffin six feet under. 
It's your standard isekai affair after all, so if that's something you'd consider a spoiler, I'm not exactly sure what you expect out of isekai in general, and that's a tad worrying. Dude dies, which I damn near died of laughter at, so look forward to that, and is transported to this magical world. From there, he basically works his way up to being the boss emperor of the place, though he does so by being a generally pretty good dude to people. So props for that. I at least like a protagonist who tries to see the best in people, and even assholes in this series have a simplistic motivation that informs their actions as to not just be an asshole for the sake of it. He builds a life there, getting friends, making allies along the way, and that's probably where the show shines for me. You see, having an OP protagonist who kicks all the ass isn't necessarily a bad thing. If anything, One Punch Man demonstrates that. But to do so successfully, it requires another aspect for people to get attached to. You can't have an OP protagonist in a focus on battles and struggles when you know he's gonna come out on top with little effort. You want to see him get knocked down from time to time to wind you up for release. This series manages to dodge that bullet by making most of what people come back for is the chill atmosphere for a benevolent godlike dude just helping other people. Like taking a decrepit village and turn it into a thriving town while making enemies become friends. Which I guess brings me on to what I do like about this series. It's fun. Fun? Is that something we're still allowed to have? Yeah, it's fun. It's a relaxing watch that doesn't get you hyped up each week for some dramatic conclusion or epic fight scenes that get the blood pumping. It's an anime you can just sit back, binge, and feel good about watching. It's hard to say the last time I had a relaxing experience when watching an anime since I'm forever chasing the hype and feels to get my cold heart beating again. But this one fits a particular niche for me. Overall, this series has a cheap B-movie aesthetic with its not-so-great animation, cheesy action, and cringy dialogue. The grandiose meaning the scenes are trying to convey is undercut by the shoddy production in a way that's comical most times. But that's part of the charm, making it fall just on the side of an enjoyable experience. I made the comparison to junk food earlier, and I think that's apt. This series isn't technically impressive, boasting a must-see storyline or even offering much in the comedy, but it's warm, comforting, and makes the viewer feel good. It might not be good for me or a positive indicator for industry trends, but I'm allowed a bag of chips once in a while, right? So would I recommend this series for quality? <laughs> God no. Would I recommend it for some dumb fun? Yeah, I'll say I have that when I watch it. And if you're looking for something fun once in a while, I'd say give it a watch for that reason. Probably because this series won't even be a footnote once it ends, and you'll forget about it until browsing an anime list in a few years. Because once you're done, it'll fade from memory. Hey, you made it to the end of the video! Please like, comment, subscribe, and do all the other YouTube stuff, because that really helps me out. Thanks for watching.